And this paper was alarming because it said that sperm count had dropped 50% in the prior 50 years. Okay? It came out in 92. Mm. All right. And so the committee asked me as a statistician, which is what my doctorate is in, uh, to look at this and tell the committee whether this is something they could, you know, consider for their work on the, you know, in this committee. And although it wasn't related directly to, at that point, to hormonally active agents in the environment, which is what the committee was called, right? So we had this harm that appeared to be going on with unknown costs at that point. So I looked at the paper, and I have to say, I was not uh, impressed. Why weren't you impressed? Um, well, first of all, it was very thin in terms of number of words and pictures and data. And the data that were there, if I had a graph, I could show it to you. But, I, but you've seen it, in I think, in yes. maybe. Yeah. And... Um, th- a lot of the data were in recent years. They were kind of spotty over the time period. And more importantly, perhaps, there were not, you know, any of the factors that we worry about, which might cause an erroneous decline, none of those were considered. So I said I wasn't sure. And so the committee said, well, can you investigate this and let us know what you think, okay? So I had the good fortune to be on sabbatical and be able to do that, and I spent six months answering that question. So let me just give you an example. So you might yourself think about things that could make, a, but you read about it, so that doesn't, <laughs> 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 but um, you know, somebody approaching this might think, well, okay, that went down because you know, in more recent years, the men were older. That could make it down somewhat. Actually, sperm count doesn't decline dramatically with age, so that might be a small factor. Um, maybe the men are more stressed. That's probably happening, mm. and stress actually does lower sperm count. Okay. And the men could have been more obese, and obesity lowers sperm count. And. Maybe most importantly, you might ask, well, maybe the way we count sperm has changed so that in recent years, the counting method counts lower. You know, methods change, and maybe they're not exactly the same over the 50 years, right? So, and finally, there was the question of who are these men? And maybe if you think about, you can't ask a man on the street to give a sperm sample. Right. So a man has to volunteer and he has to usually have a motivation to do that. And maybe he's doing that because he's going to get a vasectomy. Then he has very good sperm count, right? Because he's had a lot of children. Mm -hmm. Or maybe he's doing that because he's having trouble conceiving and then he has low sperm count. So Mm -hmm. the selection of the population is really important. Right. Right. So there were 61 studies. And so I took out of those 61 studies, I got them retrieved them, looked through them, and took out of them any information I had on these and other relevant factors. I also took out what country they were conducted in and and so on and so forth. So all the details I could about the study. And then I and my colleagues put them in a you know, spreadsheet <laughs> and ran a more complicated analysis than had been done before. Hmm. So we called it multivariable because we had all these variables in there, right? We're not just looking at the decline. And Danny, it was staggering to see that after all that work of six months and (laughs) accounting for all these factors, the slope changed from minus 0.93 to minus 0.95. It didn't change at all. Right. That's million sperm per milliliter okay. per year. And wow, I just like, I went back to the committee and I said, I can't make this go away. It looks like it's real. And then I did another analysis, which we don't have to go into detail unless you want to, where I, 
I re-abstracted the studies from the literature, thinking maybe the original ones were biased, you know? And then I ended up with 101 instead of 61, so that was good. More studies, longer time period. And then the slope was minus 0.94. So you see, nothing made any difference. Right. Right? It's so, I mean, it's so unusual in science to see that, that consistency, you know? So I thought, okay, this is something I really have to look at. And that began sort of the mystery story mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that I tell in Countdown, and I tell to people, and we can tell it to, I can tell it to you today, uh, of how I began unraveling that and trying to find out what was going on. So what year was it when you started your study? Your study where you took uh, how many patients or how many people was it? Or how many young men that you studied in 2017? Ah, uh, so 2017 was actually not a study. It was a, a, a meta study. So we didn't actually study anybody. 2017 is the sperm decline paper. Oh, right. Right. So do you mean that one? I think so. I think you, you mentioned that you uh, in the, there was a study that involved something like 250 children or, or young men where you conducted it and it's still ongoing. Ah, uh, that's much later. OK. Yeah. So that's uh, that was the one that's ongoing now is tides. And that's um, started in 2011. Oh, OK. Yeah. So that's that's a different kind of a different story mm. um but now we're talking about sperm count so in terms of sperm count what i asked after i saw this not making you know couldn't make it go away so i thought well what could be causing it it's a natural question you see something you don't know what causes it so i decided that an interesting thing would be to think about what the environment is doing because we couldn't explain it by those other lifestyle factors, right? Stress, age, obesity, but maybe something in the environment is making this happen. And maybe that's changed over time. When you say you couldn't explain it by the lifestyle factors, what made you, I mean, it seems like you probably could explain it by the lifestyle factors, right? No, because when we included them, it didn't change the slope at all. Oh, right, okay. See, so mm. that the, those factors did not make this go away. I see. Adjusting for those. It's called controlling for confounders. Okay. Yeah, you know, and and you know when you can control for something like a confounder, you'll put that in the model, and then the slope will change or the result will change. I understand. But when we put those in, nothing changed, so they weren't accounting for anything, actually, um, in those sixty-one studies. So so we thought, okay, well maybe it's environment. So how do you address environment? So this is really not obvious what to do, but what we did was. What I did, I, I selected four cities in the United States with different environments. And I recruited the men in exactly the same way. So there wasn't that problem with selection bias. And I can, I'll tell you in a minute how we did that. And then we measured the sperm exactly the same way in each of the four centers. Okay. And to, to make sure we were doing that, all of the technicians from the four centers came to UC Davis and were trained together, and they used the same counting devices, the same counting chambers in all places. And then every month, they had a quality control send out. So what they did was they took one semen sample, split it in four, tested it in Davis sent it to the four centers, and the four centers sent back their findings. How many sperm? How much did they move? What were their shapes? The way okay. you evaluate sperm. So that in that way, we knew that throughout the study, everybody was doing things the same way. Because we were trying to do replicates of the same study in four places, right? Right. Which, which cities did you choose? Okay. So at that time, I was living in Columbia, Missouri, which is in the semi-rural center of Missouri very much exactly in the center of the story. Okay, okay. And, um, and they grow a lot of crops there. So that was the agricultural center. Okay. And then we included Minneapolis, which is obviously urban. Mm -hmm. We included New York, and we included Los Angeles. And then we looked at their semen quality. Mm -hmm. 
And what we found was absolutely alarming and unexpected. And what we found was that the men living in central Missouri, in Columbia, had half, half as many moving sperm as men in Minneapolis. Wow. That's what I said. Wow. And is that, that's obviously due to... Wait, some wait. Of the, okay, sorry. <laughs> we sorry, don't again. know. Who can, don't sorry, jump there. Okay. But your question, I know where you're going. Mm-hmm. You're going to say... The agri- agri- agriculture right. and pesticides. So that's the obvious difference between those mm-hmm. places. But you can't conclude that that's the reason unless you actually show it. Right, right. right. So it turns out, very luckily for us, that you can measure pesticide exposure in the urine. And I remember I told you that we got the men's urine. Yes. So, and we got that at the same time they gave a semen sample. Okay. All right? Right. So we could ask, okay, are the levels of pesticides in the men's urine at that time when they gave the semen sample related to their sperm quality at that time? And the answer was yes. And we found five pesticides that were very different between men who had very good semen quality and very poor semen quality in uh, Missouri, in our, our center in Missouri. Five different pesticides. Yeah. Wow. Well, several were um, triazine alternatives like atrazine. You have you heard? Of, I don't yes. know if you heard of atrazine. Yeah. yeah. So those were big players. Enjoy that liquid death. No plastic. Mm. Death to plastic. Death to plastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, were any of the people that you, in the study, could you tell what their occupation was and what they did for a living? Absolutely. Okay. Were any of them workers on farms? dealing Not, like- not, not abundantly. You know, not, they didn't explain it. Right. Um, there were some, but pesticides exposure is occupational, but it's also through the air and water and through the food, which of course is you know, distributed mm. across the country right. or even the world. So everybody gets exposed to pesticides. And yes, the sprayers and the applicators of pesticides are more exposed, but we had very few of those. 